Thank you. So, um, let's see. So we're, we're wrapping things up here pretty quickly. Um, I was planning on maybe spending a few minutes with the problem set four um, that I uh, um, that we just got back the other day. We could also talk about the test three from last week. I don't know if we need to go over that again or not. Um, but uh, but um, and then the the program assignment as usual. So. Um, so, oh, this just kind of a reminder for everybody. It looks like we got most everybody on or here now. Um, um, so I, I said this in the announcement, but sort of be aware that the next week um, we actually end on Thursday. So it's a little bit shorter. Um, so I'm keeping the fifth uh, problem set and the fifth program assignment due on the Tuesday and Thursday like normal next week. Uh, not to mention also, I guess, Monday's like the July 4th, but uh, anyway. Um, but uh, but yeah, so the, the test though is gonna be open like from Wednesday to Thursday for the test five. And that'll be um, our last three assignments. So so anyway, I just encourage everybody to keep that in mind. You know, you can have a little bit less time. In fact, I'm gonna try to get, I'll make certain all that stuff is open here, uh, like tonight or tomorrow so that uh, you know it'd be a good idea to get through test five and then maybe get started early uh, especially on the program assignment uh, for a lot of people probably need you know the time on that um, all right um, uh, any questions about kind of stuff coming up here or anything what we're doing to wrap up All right, so let's, I, I wanted to mention maybe one or two things about the fourth problem set, uh, and then we can talk some more about the program assignment. So might be a relatively short day today. Um, um, so, So there's some example discussions on here. I think I think the only thing I really wanted to say was, you know, uh, go back over the the play, page replacement algorithms again. Um, and in fact, you know, uh, just say one or two things about this. So, uh, and uh, a lot of students were for some reason kind of filling up memory, kind of from bottom to top. Which, okay, uh, I mean, you know, I understand what you were doing but you know by convention we consider the top frame is like frame zero or frame one you know so so the the smallest number frame or the smallest uh, addresses for the page kind of at the top of the bottom so just stick with that convention so that um, things are easier uh, nobody nobody was using the um, uh, the, the this is kind of like a, a queue so um, that's good, uh, but, but yeah, again, you know, the, these things, uh, when you do these by hand for the test uh, on Friday or Saturday, you know, these are supposed to represent physical frames of memory. So, you know, it doesn't make sense that, um, you know, like for example, once memory is full here, um, that um, if I was, replacing page seven instead of page one to actually have page one move to frame two. So normally, you know, either a page gets just kicked out or it's going to stay in the same frame. And that's one thing that's trying to be represented by this here is what actual physical memory frame uh, each of these pages are at. So, um, but yeah, I, I didn't have anybody do that, so, <laughs> which was good. But I did have people kind of doing this um, from bottom to top instead of the top to bottom, which is a little bit strange. The other thing is, you know, make certain that you do indicate the, you know, the hits um, or the uh, the faults um, or both, um, just so that it's easier to um, 
if you're asked to calculate the hit ratio or the fault ratio, it's easier to double check or confirm that you're getting the right thing. The other thing, um, I mean, one final thing, I mean, I, lots of people were giving me these ratios out of the full 34 references here. So I, I talked about that again, but so, so um, I, I talked about that last Tuesday, but you know, I consider it most correct to, to think of these um, as 28 page references because basically um, up to this point, the, these first uh, one, two, three, four, five, th these first six, um, yeah, these first six references up to the seven here um, are not, we're not, we don't have to make replacement decisions for those. Okay, so what's happening there is there's free frames that don't have any page um, and the operating system is, is making an initial placement decision rather than a replacement decision. All right, so, so that's, if, if you read our chapter um, eight, you know, it talked a little bit about, you know, placement versus replacement, you know, so, so um, so, you know, uh, initial placements um, are usually done slightly different, or if there are free frames of memory, um, we won't call the uh, page replacement um, scheme to, to make a replacement decision, we'll, we'll pick one of those empty ones. We, we, we'd prefer not not to kick out something that's already in there if we don't have to, right? Um, so anyway, I mean, that means that normally we want these hit ratio or, or a fault ratio on just where we had to make replacement decisions. So that was actually the last 28 um, references here. So. Um, but I think most people did, I mean, if you do count these, you really should count the, the ones where you're actually placing the page um, in memory instead of uh, it already being there as faults as well. So, so yeah, you'd end up with like 17 out of 34. You get the same for both of these, which most people you know, got that correct. So. Um, the other thing, so it just um, that's, that was mostly what I wanted to say about the page replacement. Um, um, although, you know, I also want to remind you, so make certain that, you know, just because you only had to do LRU and FIFO, make sure you can also do like optimal uh, and clock. In fact, I kind of maybe wanted to kind of step through this, but uh, maybe the first few here um, and talk about what would happen with the clock. Although, boy, I wish I could do it on a whiteboard, but, um, um, but maybe I can talk through it here. Just because I'm, I'm mostly thinking about talking about implementing the, the clock, uh, uh, replacement scheme um, for our assignment here uh, after I finish with the uh, problem set. Um, so anyway, I mean, you know, for example, you know, optimal. So for LRU, if you're doing this by hand, you kind of have to look back in time or back in history. So, you know, when we had the six here, which was where we had to make the first replacement decision, um, and again, I, most people had the LRU correct, except for maybe one person. Um, um, but yeah, if you go back, you know, so currently memory has 1027. So you want to find the page that was used least recently, the one furthest back in time. So, you know, seven was the most recently used, followed by one, uh, followed by two, and then zero would be the least recently used, right? So, the, I mean, that, that's just how you do least recently used. So uh, I just, I'm mentioning that because, you know, optimal is really, Kind of similar if you're doing this by hand, uh, but um, uh, you really you need to look uh, into the future, right? So the goal for optimal page replacement is I want to replace the page that's going to not be needed for the longest amount of time, and that will lead to um, um, uh, an optimal solution, right? And yeah, nothing. I mean, everybody should know why it's optimal or what we mean by optimal in this context. It's optimal in the sense that the optimal page replacement scheme will guarantee that it has the smallest number of page faults. Um, so that, that's kind of a big deal uh, for the page replacement policies for operating systems. Um, page faults take time because you have to potentially, if, if the page is dirty that you want to replace, you have to first write it out. And then, then you have to load the page uh, that you need uh, from, uh, from secondary storage. Both of those are, are uh, need to be done from a hard drive or some sort of secondary storage, which is going to be much, much slower than, uh, you know, normal, uh, than, than accessing main memory or the CPU, right? 
Um, so you want to minimize page bumps. You want to have try to keep them as few as possible, right? So, you know, so for, for optimal, if, if we had this page fault for the six, you would instead, you know, look for the 1027 pages, but you would uh, look into the future, see which page in, in which frame you don't need for the longest amount of time. And if you replace that one, you're gu guaranteed to end up with the minimal amount of page faults, right? So in this case, you know, just looking at this single um, first fault that we had here, you know, we have seven used followed by zero followed by one. So you'd, you'd, you'd want to select the uh, two to kick out in that case to get an optimal decision. So we didn't quite make an optimal decision by kicking out zero um, because uh, it's used before page two. So. All right. And, and have, hopefully everybody kind of knows, uh, you know, why. So, so you know, we, we've got uh, an algorithm that would guarantee to, to minimize page fall. So why didn't operating systems use that algorithm, right? Um, and uh, I mean, it's basically because, you know, optimal, um, an optimal strategy is not possible for real systems because you, you, you optimal requires you to, to be able to know the future. So to know what pages are going to be requested or needed in the future. And uh, you're not going to be able to know that. Not, not going to be able to see the truth. So, so optimal, you can really only do that for simulations or kind of after the fact to see what might have been the optimal uh, replacement decision for some sequence of page references. All right. Um, and then again, you know, I encourage people, you know, don't, <laughs> for these written questions, especially if I'm asking for a discussion, don't give me like just a, a small sentence. I mean, try and actually um, uh, make an argument and defend it and um, um, answer in a little bit more depth kind of the questions that are asked there. Um, all right, and then kind of finally to, to, to jump off here, uh, unless anybody wants to ask a question about one of the other problems for the problem set. But um, um, let me talk a little bit about clock. So you should also, you know, be prepared. There might be, you have, might have to do some clock, um, uh, some, some clock algorithms on our test, uh, uh, test four here on Friday or Saturday. So, you know, again, for this page reference scheme, you know, the way clock works is it, it's, it's kind of a combination of FIFO, so maybe I'll bring up the FIFO here. So it's kind of a combination of FIFO and um, um, with a little bit of extra information. So by we need to add in this uh, use bit. So every frame will have a use bit that's either true or false that the page, and, and it's called a use bit because it means, uh, has the page been used recently? So if it's true, um, there's reason to believe it's been used relatively recently. And if it's false, um, or zero for using one and zero. Um, it hasn't been used all that recently. That's kind of what the use bit is supposed to represent, right? So initially, when you load pages, you're supposed to set all the use bits to be true. They've been used pages. So for all these initial loads, up to this point, if we were doing a clock algorithm, all the use bits would be one. But we would also have a frame pointer, uh, just like we had for FIFO. And I just realized I should have shown the frame pointer. So it'd be good if you do FIFO on the test to actually show where your frame pointer is, right? So after we, we loaded page seven, uh, placed page seven into frame four, the frame pointer wrapped back around to frame one. So for our first page fault, the frame pointer uh, would be pointing to page one for FIFO and for a clock algorithm. So for the clock algorithm, I, I discussed this a little bit. This is what you have to implement um, for the assignment due today. Um, again, remember, so all these use bits are set to one. So basically, uh, in words, the clock algorithm is mod a modification of FIFO that you don't select the page where the, pa where the frame pointer is pointing to. So you don't select the frame one, which is where our frame pointer is pointing to uh, at this point here when, when we have this page fault for page six, uh, you first scan memory to try to find a use bit that's set to zero. And while you're doing that scanning, uh, you flip the use bit, any use bit that's one, you don't stop there, you flip it to zero, but then you check the next page. So, so basically you're, you're scanning through here, trying to find a use bit to zero. So if all these use bits are one, you, you would end up you know, not selecting frame one, 
flip its use bit to zero, not selected frame two, select set its use bit to zero. Uh, frame three would, would set use bit to zero, frame four would go to zero. You would wrap back around. And then, you know, since we started there, um, its use bit is zero now. So we wrap back around and that, so we would end up making the same replacement decision that we did for FIFO here for the clock. Right. The difference being though that now when we when we load in the page six, its use bit is set to one, but all these others we just flip them to zero. Okay, so there that's an indication that they're kind of been used less recently than this page that we just loaded in and has its use bit set to one. Right. Um, so yeah, so we would have the same hit and hit here, uh, and then for this one, oh, and remember, oh, the other thing is that. Since I've replaced frame one, the frame pointer should be pointing to frame two, um, like uh, same same as FIFO. So, so I, when you select the page to be replaced, the frame pointer should be pointing to the next one for the next replacement decision. So for our next fault, uh, yeah, I mean, this use bit is one, so we would end up still the same here for the clock. So we would just bring in page one, its use bit would be set to one, and our frame pointer would be pointing to frame three here. Um, oh, oh, no. Um, Oh, I skipped something. So, so that might not be completely true. So the other the other way that the use bit can get set to one is for page hits. So, so I should have modified a little bit what I said there. So when we had this reference to seven, um, remember, you know, these last three use bits are zero. So that would actually, and, and you know, our six has a use bit of one or, or, or true. But since we have a, a hit, a reference to seven, we should reset its use bit to one because it's been used relatively recently, right? And, and yeah, actually this is gonna modify uh, what happens here because same thing would happen for the reference to page zero. So, you know, the use bit for page zero, uh, frame two would get set to one. And, and our, our frame pointer is still pointing to frame two if you're following me. So, so yeah, actually something different would happen here than the replacement decision that's made for FIFO because you know we, we would be starting here at frame two but the use bit is one so we would we would keep page zero in frame two we would set the use bit to zero and then we would go to the next frame and we would find its use bit is actually zero so so for clock we would actually end up replacing frame three instead of frame two right um all right. So anyway, you know, make sure you understand that, or, or you know, uh, as a result of implementing the program assignment, um, I mean, you have to understand that a little bit better how that works and how you actually implement that in code. So, um, but yeah, you'll probably get um, you might get some questions where you have to do optimal or clock or LRU or FIFO again um, on our next test here. Um, all right, so yeah, I kind of want to switch over to the uh, fourth program assignment. Want to ask any last questions about the problem set or clarify anything? Okay, so let's see, I haven't started up my dev box yet, so. Go and get that going. So, um, So I don't know if I have a whole lot more to say, unless people have some questions. I thought I would go over, you know, uh, doing the uh, clock page replacement scheme again, maybe adding a few more details, see if that prompts some questions or um, if people um, want to ask about those. So um, clear some of this stuff off here. Um, let me just make certain everything's still building here.
All right. So, um, so as a reminder, again, we're using um, um, an object-oriented kind of design pattern here uh, um, for this assignment for um, where, I mean, our, the, your first set of tasks, you have to implement a couple of member functions for the uh, paging system. That, that's actually the, the main class that um, um, runs the, the paging system simulation for this assignment here. But um, since we wanted to support being able to do any kind of page replacement policy, or I guess I call it page replacement scheme here, um, we actually have like a helper class. Um, and if you look in the uh, paging system, the member variables, so we've got things like memory size and uh, an array to hold the, the current frames of memory to simulate, you know, keeping track of which pages and which frame of memory. Um, another array to hold the actual history, you know, the 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 page reference sequence that we're supposed to simulate. Uh, but uh, down here though, there's a pointer to a page replacement scheme. Okay. So so you know um, as I talked about before, I mean basically the way the page system works is anytime it needs to make a page replacement decision, uh, it calls one of the um, API methods of its page replacement scheme, right? So just by simply instantiating a different type of replacement policy, replacement scheme, we will get different page replacement behaviors, right? So, you know, if, if we instantiate a FIFO page replacement scheme, if it implements first in, first out correctly, uh, whenever we ask it to make a replacement decision, it'll make FIFO replacement decisions, so. Right? Um, so um, you know the way that works. Um, the um, like, for example, real quickly, if you look at the make replacement decision function. So this is this is called in the main loop where we're you know reading the next page reference, determining if it's a page fault or a page hit, um, and if it's a page fault and memory is full, this ultimately ends up calling the make replacement decision to figure out which frame. Should should be kicked out uh, to replace with the the new page of his reference, and that just had a fault, right? So in that context, so you know the way then that we leave it up to our helper class is we simply call one of the member methods, the the make replacement decision. That returns a frame number, um, and that will be the the frame number that that the simulation um, chooses for replacement um, in the main loop. Uh, of our simulation here. So. Um, just as another um, quick example, um, um, We um, call the you know, page hit method for the uh, replacement scheme. Um, some here, whenever we determine that a page hit has occurred. Um, um, so there it is in the um, function that's processing the next uh, page reference. So, so the main loop of that is that if it's a hit, um, we uh, tell the scheme that, that that they had a hit um, on the page uh, the, at, at the particular frame in memory. Right? And if it's a, if it's a miss, um, and you know if memory is full, we do the page replacement decision that I just looked at. Uh, if memory is not full, we instead do a, just a simple page placement instead of a replacement. All right, um, so. So let's see if anybody has any questions then about implementing the last four or five tasks for the clock page replacement scheme. So, um, so again, you know, if, if you haven't done a lot of stuff with, you know, defining object 
hierarchies, doing object-oriented programming. This is, this is a fairly straightforward example of a class hierarchy. So we define a base class, um, and this is actually an abstract base class. So in C++, uh, what we mean by abstract is, is you can't actually instantiate a page replacement scheme object. It's the parent of the hierarchy here, right? It's not actually implementing a particular policy. It's really defining an interface so that the actual policies uh, will have to implement these actual methods in order to, you know, um, um, define a particular replacement policy or replacement scheme. Um, so our, our interface is, you know, the main ones is that uh, the, that make replacement decision function that we looked at um, and the, uh, you know, you ought to do something for page hit or some, some replacement policies have to know if, if a hit occurs in order to keep track of that. And you actually have to know if a hit occurs for the clock page replacement uh, policy because you have to set the use bit to one for the page that had a hit because it, it was used recently. So. Um, but yeah, you actually end up having to implement all four of these methods here. Um, so, I had suggested a good way to start is just to um, um, start with the implementation of FIFO because the clock and FIFO is, is implemented completely for you. So for FIFO, all we need is a simple frame pointer that keeps track of which frame, uh, if we have to make a replacement decision, we're going to select to, to be kicked out um, and, and replaced with the, the new page here, right? Um, so, I mean, you could copy over the implementations of the reset scheme, page hit, get scheme status, and make replacement decision from FIFO, um, and that will get you a pretty far start on doing the clock algorithm. Um, but what you'll need in addition for the clock algorithm um, is you'll need uh, another array of um, uh, of either Boolean values or integer values. You know, to me, it makes more sense that they're Boolean values, but uh, because basically it's 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 a, a true or false. It's it's a one bit of information, right? So this this array needs to be able to be big enough so whatever the memory size is. You know, and you can get that from um, from the paging system object. But whatever the memory size is, you have to have a, an array that's of that size at least. Uh, and that array should be initialized so that all the use bits are, um, um, well, it depends on how you do it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, initially memory is gonna be empty. So all the use bits really don't have a meaning until there's a frame, uh, until there's a page loaded into the frame. Um, but um, uh, whenever you load, uh, you know, whenever you uh, place or replace a new page, its frame number should be set to one. Uh, but yeah, now that I'm thinking about it a little bit, the uh, these replacement schemes don't get told about the initial placement. So probably it's safe to assume that uh, memory is full when you have to make the first replacement decision. So all of the uh, initial use bits should be set to one or true. So, um, 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 in your constructor, you might want to create dynamically create an array of the size that you need, like say an array of booleans, um, and then initialize all of them to true, so that in anticipation of having to make replacement decisions after memory has become full. Right. So anyway, if if you have that extra. Um, array um, and your frame pointer, then you should be able to implement your clock replacement um, scheme. So, um, but I'll continue. Again. I'm, I'm gonna start with uh, the, the the two main ones that you need. So the page hit, I already kind of mentioned these on Tuesday, but uh, I'll say them again here. So for FIFO page replacement, FIFO doesn't, do anything with page hits, right? So, so when you look at the implementation of FIFO, um, it's just a, a null function, doesn't do anything. But you do have to do something for um, clock page replacement schemes on a page hit, right? So you're given a frame number, and if you have an array of use bits, uh, basically all you have, you know, this this method should be relatively straightforward. All you have to do is make certain that that use bit is true um, um, or one for the, the, the frame that was just a hit, 
right? So that's really all that's going to happen for the, the, the clock uh, page replacement uh, page hit function. Um, and then likewise, you know, this is a kind of uh, a good starting point for what you would have to do for the make replacement decision for the clock. But, you know, again, uh, the, it's, it's, it's a bit more complicated for the clock, right? So, so, so for FIFO, whatever the frame pointer is pointing to, that's the page that gets, that's the frame that gets selected to be replaced, right? So before you do kind of this code that's in the make replacement decision on FIFO, you first have to kind of scan memory, like I was describing for clock. So you have to have a loop in there that starts where the current frame pointer is pointed to. Uh, and that loop should keep going as long as the use bit um, is um, true, right? So if, if the, the frame that's being pointed to has the use bit of true or one, uh, you need to flip the use bit to zero uh, and then increase the frame pointer uh, and, and check the next one, making certain again that you wrap around. So you have to treat the, your memory frames as a circular buffer, right? So if, if you check the, the last frame, physical frame of memory, um, and uh, it's not, uh, it's use bit uh, is one, you have to wrap back around to frame zero, back to the top of memory um, and keep scanning. All right, that, that makes sense. So, I mean, the only, only other things to be careful of is, you know, you do make certain that um, uh, like is done here, you wanna make certain that the frame pointer is, is set for the next replacement decision that's called. So it should be pointing to the uh, frame after the one we're gonna return to be replaced, right? But of course you, you have to reset the frame pointer before you do your return statement. So, so you have to you know, make certain you do that correctly. Right? So you have to, to know which frame you're gonna say needs to be replaced, but, but um, um, before you return that, you have to make certain that the frame pointer is pointing to the next frame there. Um, right? And again, you know, um, if you're not used to or ever done treating like a, an array as a circular buffer, uh, this is a common idiom. So you, you uh, see an example here. So by modding by the, um, the, the memory size, uh, after you increment, that will get the remainder. And, and the effect of that is if you go past the end of physical memory, it'll wrap it back around to, to frame zero. Um, you know, to index zero of your uh, array there. Right? And here's an example like I was talking about. So in your constructor, you could use the same thing. If you dynamically allocate an array of Booleans or array of integers or whatever, um, you can use a call like this to figure out what size that array should be because uh, so, you've got a handle to the actual paging system um, instance um, that's using you as a helper. So you can ask it what the actual memory size is for the current simulation to figure out how big your use bit array should be. Um, all right. So yeah, you should probably, you know, uh, like this code does for FIFO, you should probably uh, actually put the initialization stuff in the reset scheme function. So, you know, uh, in addition to um, initializing the frame pointer to frame zero, this might be the place where you'd want to dynamically allocate your array, uh, your use bit array, um, and initialize it as needed. Uh, and that only leaves then, so a final, final word, uh, to get the, the final unit test to pass on this assignment, uh, you do have to implement the get scheme status. So this is really just returning a string representation of, of, um, of what memory looks like right now. Um, so let me back off and kind of show you how this is used. So if you go back to the page replacement scheme, uh, there's a similar, uh, well, there's a, um, let's see. Sorry, if you go back to the, the paging system, um, in the main loop of the run simulation that, that uh, performs the main loop here, looping over the, the time, uh, the page reference uh, stream here, 
Um, it's it's going to be outputting some things. Um, you know, the the current system time, what page was referenced at that time. Um, uh, and other things, but it also calls the get scheme status for the, the current page replacement scheme that's being used, right? And this returns another string that gets output here, right? So the result of this is basically, you know, the, the thing that's used in the system test. So, so like um, if we look at, uh, let's say, clock uh, four here, uh, let's look at FIFO. So here's the result of running FIFO with four physical frames of memory output. So this output is coming from uh, that method that I just showed you, um, plus then this information in the middle comes from calling the, the page replacement scheme to give to get its status. Um, is that right? Just saying. So. So yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the stuff like the system time and stuff, and then the calculation of the hit ratios and the fault ratio and stuff. Um, happens every clock tick of the simulation, right? Um, so, so that all comes from the paging system by CPP, but then the stuff in the middle comes from the, uh, the, the scheme. Um, so like if we look at FIFO, what it's doing there, uh, which is what the output is here. Um, so you'll be able to use most of this here. So let me just tell you the differences for clock, right? So um, so for FIFO, basically when we're asked, we, we basically are just displaying the contents of all the frames. Um, and then we also, uh, show where the frame pointer is pointing for our FIFO um, algorithm. So, um, so we're kind of, I, I don't know, I mean, maybe not the greatest design here. So, I mean, really, the, it's the system that um, uh, keeps track of what page is in each frame. So, so you know, we're, we're kind of going back and asking the system what, what page is in each frame as we show these uh, here in our um, scheme. Um, but yeah, the result of this loop here is basically the stuff here. So we show each frame uh, and what page is in the frame, whether it's empty or not. And for FIFO, um, you know, we, we give extra information about uh, where the frame pointer is currently pointing. Um, yeah, and, and you know, um, I just noticed something. If this confuses you, that yeah, the frame pointer just stays at zero because we're not really doing uh, replacements; we're doing uh, placements initially. So actually, not until we get everything empty do we start seeing everything filled up in memory. Um, at this point, then. When we make our first uh, page fault, um, so we have a reference to two here, so that's a hit. Uh, but then we have a reference to six, that's a fault. So finally, we get the frame pointer to move then down at um, our six reference here. Uh, and four replaces, goes into frame zero, and the frame pointer gets moved up to the frame one, actually, for five there. Um, So anyway, yeah, I mean, decoding that. And, and here down here at the bottom of this loop, is that's where the, the frame pointer is being output um, on the, um, the the output from the simulation. And so once we're at the, the frame pointer, we just give an indication where the frame pointer is. Um, so anyway, to, to wrap that up then, so you can use, this will get you about 90% of the way of what you need for the, uh, the get scheme status for the clock. The only difference for the clock, um, so if we look at um, um, an, an output for the clock stream here, 
It's basically the same, but we ask you in order to pass the system test, we ask you to also indicate the use bit, right? So you have to add in some extra bit of information. I mean, you'll still have a frame pointer like you do for the uh, FIFO. Uh, you'll still be able to get what the current contents of our memory, but uh, in between those two, uh, you need to give the, the current status of the use bit. Right? So looking at this for the, the, the first simulation, you know, initially all the use bits are set to one. Um, as we're doing the initial page placements. Um, and if we come down to here, uh, you know, where we've finally gotten memory filled and we're gonna start making replacement decisions, we'll start seeing the clock algorithm working at, at this point, right? Um, and yeah, maybe we can step through this. So again, I believe this is the, 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 the same one from our textbook, you know, with four frames of memory, I believe, and um, the same page reference scheme, so. Um, so yeah, at time five, I mean, we had a reference to page two, that was a hit, so really nothing kind of happens. I mean, the, the use bit should, should have been set to one, but it was already one previously, so, so we don't see any change at that point. Um, and then at time six, though, we have a reference to four, which is a fault, so, so page four is in, in memory, um, so we're faulting here. Um, so going back and looking through here, what should happen is it'll scan through all the way through here, flipping all the use bits to zero. We'll end up back at frame zero. So four will end up at frame zero. Um, but when it gets loaded in, um, its use bit is one. Um, and frame pointer then is pointing to the next frame after the one that we just replaced, right? So, so that's that's you know kind of typical if all the use bits are one. We, we do one complete wraparound, flipping all the use bits, uh, we end up replacing uh, the frame where the frame pointer was originally. But now, um, you know, kind of the difference is from FIFO is that only its use bit is one, everybody else's use bit is zero. Um, and, you know, that should make sense. Again, if you understand what the use bits are trying to do, you know, so four, we just was the page that we just referenced the most recently. And then these other pages, you know, haven't been used as recently, right? And so it's one bit of information uh, about the relative uh, recency of uh, when pages have been referenced. Um, so for our next one, we have a, page, a reference to page five. That was a hit. Also oh, notice that um, uh, actually this this is what I was just doing by hand, I believe, because. Um, no, I'm sorry. Um, no, this, this is a different page reference screen. So anyway, it's similar though. So we have a, a hit here. So the only thing that happens for the hit, you know, the frame pointer should stay at the same location. Uh, but since page five was referenced, it's used to get set to one or true. Um, in our next step, we have another hit. So we end up setting the use bit to, to one for um, the page three here in frame one. Um, and then for the next one, um, referring to page two, that's a, a fault. So here, given the frame pointer, we're not gonna select frame one um, to be kicked out because this use bit is one. So we'll flip its use bit to zero and keep scanning. Um, and so the first frame that we find with the use bit of zero um, is the, uh, the frame two. So it will get selected to be kicked out. Um, uh, frame page two will be loaded to frame two, um, and uh, it's used to be set to one um, because of the initial load. Uh, and and you know also don't forget yeah the frame pointer should be pointing to the frame after the one that we just um, um, replaced there. All right. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'll go ahead, keep going through those anymore, but. Um, um, the the kind of what got me into this though so the only really difference that you need for the um the status the 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 get scheme status um is for the clock is showing what the use bits are in addition to the other information that you had for fifo um, Okay, um,
All right. So yeah, that was, uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and wrap up here. Let's see if anybody has any questions. So, um, yeah, so uh, for this assignment, I mean, you do have to get that scheme status working um, before the all the system tests will be passing. So I think that was part of the point uh, on this assignment. Um, um, so. Okay, so does anybody want to ask a question here or should we go ahead and wrap up? No? Anybody online? Um, all right, so, you know, if not, um, I guess, I, I mean, I'll remind you, I, I still, although I haven't checked the last two days, but I mean, some people have submitted um, a file, um, but it wasn't, uh, the correct one for the make submit. Actually, one person had submitted a file, but just was renamed. Um, and you know, um, I, I was ex expecting you to just uh, get re uh, upload the file. Um, oh, I lost my microphone there. Uh, anyway, you know, so try make sure to use the make submit command if you guys can still hear me um, and submit the right thing. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop, and uh, I'll go ahead and post this and see you guys later. Then.